Welcome to the second season of the WDC Distinguished Lecture Series. This season revolves around effective altruism, and the episodes are organized in coordination with the Effective Altruism Debate Championship. Today, our speaker is Olivia Larson. Olivia is a philanthropy advisor at GiveWell, helping GiveWell donors decide how to give and keeping them updated on the research progress. She's currently on leave from the Yale Law School of Management, where she's pursuing an MBA. Olivia's talk is centered on the GiveWell organization and issues of health and poverty. We're excited to have Olivia on board, and for similar content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Olivia Larson, and I'm here to talk about GiveWell. Thank you so much for inviting me. As you may know, GiveWell is a charity that reviews other charities. And I want to start by telling you about a charity called Play Pumps. A Play Pump is a water pump slash piece of playground equipment. It tries to solve the problem of water access through installing a playground merry-go-round. Children play on the merry-go-round, water is pumped on into an above ground storage tank, and people no longer have to walk long distances to access water or drink unsafe water that may make them sick. The international development community was very excited about play pumps. They were heralded as innovative, literally using the joyful energy of children at play to give people access to clean water. It was reported on in many newspapers, won a World Bank Development Marketplace Award, and was supported by celebrities like Jay-Z and government agencies like the United States Agency for, Agency for International Development alike. The only problem with play pumps is that they didn't work. What these people didn't take into consideration was that children didn't want to play on the play pumps. A regular playground merry-go-round uses momentum to spin on its own. That's what makes it fun. Play pumps didn't spin on their own at all. They required constant effort to move and pump water. It wasn't playing, it was dragging. Even more importantly, the play pumps were less effective at pumping water than the traditional water pumps they replaced. The Guardian estimated that children would have to play for 27 hours a day to get as much water as the founder promised could come from one play pump. Play pumps seemed to be well-intentioned, but it wasn't able to fulfill the promises it made. It was founded by a marketer and its real strength was marketing. And this is something that GiveWell sees as common in the nonprofit space with claims like 50 cents can save a child's life. All these marketing claims can be really overwhelming. As a donor, it's hard to understand if a charity is actually able to fulfill the promises they make. It's much easier to donate to what sounds good or is marketed well than it is to actually identify the charities that can make a real positive impact on the world. But that's what GiveWell tries to do. In 2007, GiveWell's founders, Holden Karnofsky and Ellie Hassenfeld, were working in Excel all day, modeling returns for the hedge funds they worked at. And they thought, why isn't anyone applying this same level of scrutiny to charities? They started a group with some friends to decide where to donate, and they were shocked by how hard it was to find actual information on what the charity does and what impact it has on the lives of the people they're trying to help. They realized that finding this information and wading through all the lack of transparency on charity websites was a full-time job. So they quit their jobs in finance and started GiveWell. GiveWell is different from most charity evaluators. Most charity rating sites rate many charities and focus on overhead. An overhead ratio basically takes a charity's administrative costs and compares it to the program costs, suggesting that the lower the administrative costs, the better the charity. We think this is a bad way to evaluate a charity because overhead costs can be valuable. Like it can be valuable to pay to hire qualified staff with relevant expertise or paying to monitor so you can see where your charity has a strong value add. On the other hand, GiveWell is a finder of great giving opportunities that you can feel confident donating to. We dig into the research beyond the overhead ratio and work to find the charities that save and improve lives the most per dollar donated. We work to maximize impact and find charities that can transform lives at a relatively low cost. And over the years, GiveWell's directed over $500 million to the charities we recommend. We've been featured in publications like the New York Times and The Economist, and over 60,000 donors have given based on our recommendations. What GiveWell's work looks like in practice 
is that we spend significant amounts of time researching before we ever recommend a charity. Each year, we look at evidence and cost effectiveness before we publish a very short list of recommended charities, eight this year. And anyone who wants to can come to our website, read our recommendations and why we recommend them, and if they'd like to, make a donation. When people make donations to GiveWell's recommended charities, we pass on 100% of that donation to the charity. GiveWell itself is a nonprofit that's funded independently by donors who choose to make donations directly to GiveWell's operations. So here are GiveWell's current top charities that save and improve lives. I'm not gonna go into what each of the charities does, but as some examples, the Against Malaria Foundation has been on our top charity list for a long time, and it distributes long-lasting insecticide-treated mosquito nets to protect people from malaria. Another one of our recommended charities on the life-improving side is Give Directly, which gives cash directly with no strings attached to very poor people in sub-Saharan Africa. And so GiveWell recommends charities that work in global health and development in low income countries, because that's where we see the opportunities to make the biggest impact. We started out looking at charities working in many different areas, but we ended up shifting and honing in on global health and development because that's where many studies are done of programs. These studies can help us identify which programs are most successful at helping people. Additionally, many of the issues faced by people living in low income countries are a bit simpler or easier to address than the issues facing rich countries. This is because rich countries have often already dedicated resources to addressing problems that are best addressed by resources. As an example, malaria was eradicated in the American South in 1951, but remains endemic in many low income countries. For example, some of the ways that we help people in low income countries is through combating extreme poverty and extreme poverty is really extreme. Even though we've made exceptional progress on this in the last 30 years, there are still over 730 million people living on less than $1.90 a day. And this figure is already adjusted for price differences between countries. So it represents what living on $2 a day would be like in the United States. Even of people that don't live in extreme poverty, billions and billions of people live on more than $2 a day, but are still extremely poor. In, in addition to this life improving work that we do, we also work to save lives by treating cheaply preventable diseases. As I mentioned earlier, though we've been able to eradicate malaria in some places like the American South, there are still hundreds of thousands of malarial deaths a year, over 90% of which are in Africa. And so I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into one of our current recommended charities, which is Malaria Consortium. Uh, this is a picture of uh, a malaria consortium uh, community health worker uh, distributing uh, medication to a child. Um, and Malaria Consortium is one of our recommended charities. We recommend them for their Seasonal Malaria Chemo Prevention Program, or SMC. This program works in areas where malaria is highly seasonal by distributing preventative anti-malarial medication to all children under five to protect them from malaria. By protecting children during the four month long rainy season, uh, we think we're able to offer them some protection for the entire year since they're protected during the most uh, dangerous time for them. And we recommend Malaria Consortium for a lot of reasons, one of which being its strong evidence base. We've seen seven high quality studies showing that SMC leads to reduced rates of malaria. Malaria Consortium also has a high cost effectiveness. We believe they can save a life for between three and $4,000. That estimate isn't like the estimates from other charities, like 50 cents can save a life. This is our all in estimate, including costs borne by both Malaria Consortium and other actors, as well as importantly, accounting for the fact that not every child who receives a malaria treatment would otherwise have died from malaria. Those other very low estimates are often just the cost of one treatment. Malaria Consortium also has strong transparency, and we think they'd be able to use additional funding to expand their programs very cost effectively. So as I just mentioned, Malaria Consortium passes GiveWell's very high bar for both evidence of effectiveness in that we can pretty easily connect the program we can support to the impact it has and cost effectiveness. Having that impact is pretty cheap. 
So GiveWell's goal going forward is to increase our cost effectiveness. And we're asking the question, if we look for things that may be more difficult to evaluate in terms of evidence of effectiveness, will we be able to find even higher cost effectiveness? One of the ways that we're investigating this, this question and thinking about it is through technical assistance. So our traditional non-technical assistant charities like Malaria Consortium uh, work like this. We call them direct delivery and donor funds support all aspects of the program. They buy the medicine, hire and train the staff members who deliver the medicine and monitor that work to be sure that it's actually going out. And we think that's very cost effective, but we think that some programs might be more cost effective if they're delivered via an existing government infrastructure. We call this technical assistance. Basically, GiveWell supports a charity that then helps support a government to improve the services they provide. We haven't sought out technical assistance work in the past because there's a much less clear line of sight between donor dollars and impact. As an example, in the case of SMC, a direct delivery charity, we have a pretty good idea of exactly how many additional children will be reached with an extra $10,000. We're working with a single organization, Malaria Consortium, and so we can ask them, how much funding did you spend? How many children did you reach? And use that information to come up with an estimate of its impact and its cost effectiveness. On the other hand, in the case of technical assistance, we're trying to model how a charity might affect the government's work to help make more good outcomes happen. So the impact of the charity's outcomes are affected by a sometimes complex government system with idiosyncrasies that may be hard to predict, like political climate. So predicting the impact of an individual group or charity in influencing existing government systems is more uncertain by its very nature. But we think that there might be a reservoir of highly cost-effective giving opportunities in this more leveraged technical assistance space that we haven't yet explored. And so to that end, this year we've been looking more into those types of opportunities. Over the past few months, we've looked at a lot of different technical assistance projects. Um, as an example, one that we've looked at is supporting a charity that helps health clinics better provide nutritional therapy for malnourished children. In some areas, these clinics were having a hard time planning for seasonal fluctuations in food insecurity. So the charity we would support is helping the clinics plan for certain times of year where the clinic may, be more, may need to be more prepared for helping children because more children are malnourished during certain times of year. And an example of a technical assistance project that we recently funded is the screening and treatment of syphilis in pregnancy. So to describe the problem a little bit, Around a million pregnant people have active syphilis infections every year, and most of those cases are in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. A third of pregnancies with active syphilis end in the child's death, and among children that survive, around a quarter have congenital syphilis, which can result in severe deformities and lifelong disability. The good news is that syphilis in pregnancy is treatable by a single injection of penicillin which is a common medication that costs around 16 cents per dose. And we think this issue is neglected. The World Health Organization recommends this treatment, but few countries have implemented the recommendation so far, and philanthropic funds going toward it are extremely limited. We're not quite sure why this is the case. It could be because of a lack of awareness of the issue or because of a focus on HIV in pregnancy to the exclusion of other STIs. But it's that very investment in HIV screening and treatment during pregnancy that might now be leveraged to increase the screening and treatment of syphilis in pregnancy. There's a new testing device on the market that allows people to be tested for HIV and syphilis at the same time, with the results returned in the same visit. This dual test costs only a bit more than the HIV only test, and we expect the price to come down to the same price soon. And so GiveWell recently funded a charity that we've worked closely with in the past called Evidence Action to help the government of Liberia switch from HIV only tests to dual tests. Liberia has a, high, has a relatively high rate of syphilis and a high rate of HIV screening and treatment in pregnancy. So supporting Liberia in a switch to this new dual test presents a potentially great opportunity to leverage that HIV testing and treatment infrastructure uh, to help people with syphilis. Ultimately, Evidence Action expects to transition this work fully to the government in five years. 
Our current best guess is, this, is that this work may be as cost effective or even more cost effective than our top charities, but there's a lot of uncertainty that comes with that, much more so than with our direct delivery top charities. Because again, the path to impact is harder to assess than in the case of direct delivery charities. But even with taking some probability of failure into account, in expectation, we think this is likely a very strong giving opportunity. Another way in which GiveWell is looking into giving opportunities that may be more cost effective but harder to evaluate is through looking into policy advocacy. For policy advocacy, we are hoping to support charities that help the governments of low or lower middle income countries improve their public health policy making, either by offering technical assistance for legislation or by advocating legislators to pass legislation for basic public health measures, such as alcohol control or lead paint regulation. And we think that policy interventions may be good because they have the potential to be high leverage. A one-time investment could cause a policy to be passed that could impact a whole country's worth of people for a significant period of time. And eventually, ownership could be completely handed off to the government. On the other hand, it's much more difficult to understand a charity's value add. Instead of evaluating the impact of something the charity does, we're trying to think about how likely it is that a certain policy will pass before the charity got involved, and then how that likelihood changed after the charity got involved to find the additional impact of the charity's involvement. So next up, I'm gonna go into an example of a grant we made in this policy space. This grant involves a charitable intervention to decrease suicides. So please skip ahead a little bit if you prefer not to hear about this. The grant we made was to address pesticide suicides, which is a common way of attempting suicide in rural agricultural communities. These deaths make up 14% of completed suicides worldwide. Many of these pesticides are very lethal and very common in households. So deliberate ingestion may be more lethal than someone attempting suicide might expect. And so the grant that we made was to the Center for Pesticide Suicide Prevention, or CPSP. They work to encourage governments to ban the most lethal pesticides so they're not available for suicides. We've seen some evidence from Sri Lanka that banning pesticides coincided with pesticide suicide deaths going down and suicide deaths in general going down. So in 2017, we gave CPSP a $1.3 million grant to conduct research on the most lethal pesticides in India and Nepal. CPSP hopes that this research will be used to encourage the governments of India and Nepal to institute a ban on the most lethal pesticides used in suicides. So we haven't completed our grant retrospective yet. And as I mentioned before, causal attribution is difficult in this case but we believe that the Center for Pesticide Suicide Prevention has been relatively successful. In 2019, one of its target countries, Nepal, banned the two pesticides that the Center for Pesticide Suicide Prevention had identified as most lethal. We expect this to save lives and we don't expect it to cause a reduction in agricultural output. So while GiveWell is always looking for more cost-effective giving opportunities like policy advocacy and technical assistance as I just uh, shared about, we remain incredibly excited about the charities we currently recommend. As an example of how cost-effective our opportunities are, the United States Department of Transportation will spend over $9 million to prevent one traffic death in the United States. We think our recommendations can prevent a death in a poor country for between three and $5,000. So if you'd like to join us to create this impact, or learn more about GiveWell, um, feel free to visit our website at uh, givewell.org or to uh, reach out to me. I'm Olivia at givewell.org. Thanks so much for having me um, and have a great rest of the day. Thanks.